Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Curtis Menke. I am the college and career counselor here at McHenry High School. Uh, today's session, uh, we thank you for joining us. Uh, if you are watching this live, and it looks like there's at least a couple of people that are watching this live, we welcome you. To our live viewers, since we are live streaming through YouTube, you can actually comment in the comment space below uh, the video there and uh, ask questions. So if you have live questions throughout for our live viewers, we will respond to those in real time here for you. If you are watching this recorded, we again, we are grateful for your participation and engagement as well. I'm gonna pull Jake back on screen here. All right, so again, I'm Curtis Mickey, McHenry High School College and Career Counselor. I'll let my other colleagues on this presentation introduce themselves. Amy, we'll go ahead and start with you. Hi, I'm Amy Buchanan. I'm one of the sophomore counselors. I have A through LE here at the high school. Yep, and we are fortunate to have you. Kristen, why don't you go next? Hi, I'm Kristen Mueller, and I am representing the admissions office at McHenry County College. Excellent, and Jake? Hi, welcome, I'm Jake Hometh. I'm the executive uh, director of workforce development representing uh, career training and non-credit opportunities through McHenry County College. Again, uh, MCC is our strongest local post-secondary partner. Uh, and as you'll hear me say probably a couple of times throughout, MCC is both a traditional college for students who are looking for transfer programs. However, uh, the main reason why we have them with us today is because MCC is in many ways a technical and trade school. They have all sorts of programs that are designed for students who are looking for shorter term programs, who are looking at careers that do not require bachelor's degrees. Uh, we wanna make sure that our students and families are getting the best bang for their buck. Uh, we're gonna start by hitting a couple of things and then we'll turn to MCC a little later on in this presentation. I like to include this, uh, this slide here early in a lot of the presentations, just because we wanna make sure that all of our families really believe with us, you know, that we are here to serve all students regardless of their interests, regardless of what kind of, of next step opportunities they're considering. I personally would not do the job as college career counselor if I was only expected to, to push students into four-year colleges. We wanna make sure that all of our students have opportunities. We really do value all careers and all career pathways. So here's the agenda. We'll start with a couple of resources that we use with students and that are available for our parents and families and guardians to use. We'll talk about some of the other local uh, post-secondary workforce training based opportunities, apprenticeships, trade schools, things like that. Uh, we'll have a little bit about financial aid and scholarships. So again, we'll give a couple of basics about that today. We are going to have a much deeper dive into that topic. We're going to have an in-person presentation here at the high school on October 11th uh, that evening. And then the next morning, kind of similar to this format, we'll do a virtual version of it as well. So again, attend one, attend both if you really, really want to. Uh, and then after that, uh, we will hear from our MCC colleagues regarding uh, the awesome opportunities in our own backyard. This, this particular slide uh, kind of works into every presentation I do. Uh, the one goal we have for every student at McHenry High School is to continue their education or training after high school in some way, shape, or form. The bottom two on here represent uh, pathways that involve a four-year bachelor's degree. The one in the top left represents military opportunities. Today, though, we're going to focus more on the one in the top right, uh, a term I like to use called workforce training. This includes, again, career paths that do not require a bachelor's degree, may or may not involve college in some way, shape, or form, but not necessarily in the way uh, that we norm, that, that I guess I think we sort of stereotypically use the word college here. Uh, for those that like things simple, like me, uh, this is the one word that really captures how your high school counseling team works with your students uh, along the way. At ninth grade, we ask, we ask our freshmen to do no more than imagine what might be out there a couple of years from now. The sophomore year, discovery, which is really kind of taking a turn inward, helping students identify their skills, their interests, their passions, things like that. 11th grade, we take a look outward, what opportunities are out there beyond our walls to explore. And then senior year is that time to act on everything that we've done up until that point. Uh, this slide really kind of captures, again, how we help students identify things that might be out there for them. Uh, we do things along the way, especially in freshman through junior year, to help students identify interests, which are things you like, skills, things you're good at, values, things that are important to you, and personality, 
who you are. And I will also uh, kind of extend this as well. When we're working with students, especially if I'm working with an undecided student, sometimes I'll take the process of elimination approach and start with what are the things you're not interested in? What are the things maybe you're not so good at? What are the things that are not important to you? We'll cross those off the list, see what's left. It's a lot easier to make a choice on something when there's not as many options in front of you. Resources. So again, I would argue that the people-based resources are the number one that are uh, number one resources that are available for students and families. Every McHenry High School student has a course in Schoology uh, that is labeled post-secondary resources. Uh, they're tailored to each of the four graduating classes. Uh, you can tell which course it is in Schoology. Uh, when you hit that courses button, you'll see one that has a big orange arrow for an icon like the one that is behind me. And that is how you can tell which course that the counseling team runs here. Within there are the two generalist counselors, such as Ms. Buchanan. Uh, each grade level has two counselors that take half of the alphabet, and then I'm there as well for support. There is a link underneath our name, so anytime a student wants to meet with us, uh, all they gotta do is hit that link, they schedule their own meeting, and we'll expect to see them at that date and time. Pretty easy how that works. So beyond the people-based resources, we have a couple online resources. Uh, we have uh, the main, their main ones are there. On this screen, we're going to show you just a little bit of info about uh, the first three of those. The first one is a new program we have called School Links. Uh, this replaces, for any parents we've worked with for a while here, this replaces a program we had in the past called Naviance. This does basically future planning, future exploration. Uh, we work with underclassmen to kind of sketch out four-year plans, you know, what might be out there in their next couple of years in high school, but also to do career research, uh, to look for uh, any kind of institute, training facility, college that a student might be looking to go to in their next step. Uh, for our workforce training uh, students, uh, that the uh, last one on this page is the one that really sticks out and one of the game changers for us. In addition to doing all the other things that you would expect these programs to do, this program also allows local businesses, uh, local organization, our local industry partners to create free profiles in here as well and promote their local opportunities to our students. So for instance, if a local manufacturer is offering internships or job shadow opportunities to local students, they can actually post them in here and our students can find those. It's a, kind of, it's a really one-stop shop for all of these things. This was one of the game changers for us as far as why we went with this new program. Uh, love it so far. Uh, the next resource we have for our families and students is our college and career guide. This is an internally developed tool that is tailored just for our McHenry students and families. Uh, it's built in Google Slides, but it works like a website. So basically, you open this up. Uh, and there are 15 buttons that greet you. They're all topic-based. So if you're interested in looking further into workforce training, then you click that button and it'll take you to that page. If you're wondering how in the world do I pay for what's next, you take a look at the financial aid and scholarships button on the right side there. So again, there's buttons here that some of our students and families will never click on because they're not interested in those options and that's a-okay. But the odds are there's at least a couple here that'll help our students and families out along the way. Uh, we also, in addition to those, have uh, routine uh, visits from college representatives, career speakers, military recruiters that come through our college and career center. Students can come down and meet with those representatives, meet with those recruiters, hear presentations on uh, what is available from these different institutions. So on the screen here is just kind of a, is a, is a screenshot of, of, of a couple places that will be coming through later in October. So for instance, on October 20th during AIM at the Upper Campus, we're gonna have somebody from the, the local electricians union come through and talk about their apprenticeship programs. Uh, a couple of days later, we'll have somebody from Illinois State University here to visit with students interested in them. And lo and behold, on the 25th, uh, someone named Kristen Mueller, uh, who happens to be <laughs> one of our presenters, will actually be here during eighth period at the upper campus to meet with students who are interested in MCC's transfer and or workforce training opportunities. We challenge our sophomores and juniors to attend, and again, this is just a snapshot. There, there's about 50 different options so far that we have for our students. We challenge our sophomores and juniors, especially to attend four during our first semester. Uh, on the screen now are just some other things coming up here at McHenry High School over the course of the next month and a half. A couple that I'll point out that are of particular interest to this presentation. On October 4th is one of our marquee events, the MTI uh, stands for Manufacturing Trades and Industry Expo. This is, I want to say, the seventh time, if memory serves, that we've hosted this event. 
It'll be here at the upper campus in the new wing in the Center for, Indus for Science and Industry on the north end of the building. There will be dozens of local employers, industry partners, training institutions uh, that, that all revolve around uh, trades-based programming, manufacturing programming, uh, to make sure that our students that are looking at workforce training options have a wealth of local training opportunities available to them. Uh, on the 11th, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have a deeper dive into financial aid and scholarships, making sure that you're not paying anything more than you have to. If you prefer the virtual version, we'll have the virtual offering similar to this one the next day. Uh, and then uh, I'll throw one other nugget out there as well. On October 27th, if your students are considering military service, we are going to offer an ASVAB session here at McHenry High School. Uh, this one, I, I like to just take a quick moment and drop this nugget into our programming uh, here. Uh, for our families that are watching that are representing freshmen through juniors, we just remind you, make sure that not only are we looking you know, a year or two down the road, but we're also looking at, at what's simply available here at McHenry High School. Uh, and I mentioned senior year, year here in particular, because senior year, there's only a couple, for most students, there's only a couple of required courses left for graduation. So most students have three or four spots each semester to fill with electives. I love, love to see seniors use that senior year schedule really as a launch point into what is next. Uh, hey, Ms. Buchanan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question here. Let me go back to this slide. As you've worked with students over the years, you know, how, how do you advise them as far as how to make the most of their course opportunities here? Um, I encourage them to take advantage of uh, taking classes that are in different areas. Um, right now, we're, doing, uh, we're working with the sophomores to do a four-year plan. So obviously, they're young still. Um, so they may be like, I think I might want to do something medical or maybe marketing. And so, and, and that's totally normal. Um, and I actually, I love when they have multiple interests because then I can, you know, show them, well, let's take some business classes. Let's, let's take, you know, some of these other classes. Um, so I think just kind of pointing them in the direction of their interests, um, especially when they're undecided. Um, and then as far as seniors, I like that you bring up picking courses with a purpose because um, I know I worked with seniors last year and, and the biggest thing is, well, I want an easy schedule. And it's like, well, that's awesome. <laughs> but the colleges aren't going to like that you have all like electives, no math, English and science. So you're going to have to, you know, still the rigor is very important um, to show you know, as far as colleges go. And, and even if you're going into the trades and stuff, I know um, going back to the MTI, that's one of my favorite events. I highly recommend it. Um, but talking to the trades, you know, they want, they want the students to take at least through algebra two because um, kids are always like, why do I have to do that? And, and there's reasons behind these things. So I think um, it's one of the favorite parts of my job, sitting down and talking to kids about their interests and kind of helping them to pick classes in those areas so they can either go forward with that or eliminate areas. So yeah, those are those are my tidbits. Um, but yeah, we're here. If, if kids ever have any questions, please see your counselor. Um, we're here to help and we can certainly help point you in different directions and be able to take as many classes as possible before you're you're launched out into the real world. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Ms. Buchanan. Sure. Uh, on the screen right now are examples of some traditional private uh, technical trade schools. Uh, these, again, these are just, just some examples of some of the local ones. There are some others within an hour, an hour and a half a year or so. Uh, you know, the pros to a, a traditional trade school is that obviously they're going to have very specified programming based at some of those, those specific career skills. Um, and then you'll and you'll be in an environment that where you're surrounded by people with those very similar skills and passions. Again, the first couple here are a couple of traditional tech schools. There's cosmetology schools. I lump them into workforce training. Uh, First Institute is a is a, a small kind of technical school in Crystal Lake. Uh, there's a couple others listed there as well. Uh, apprenticeships are available from all of the different uh, opportunities listed on the screen right now. We'll come back to MCCs uh, in a few minutes here. ICAT is another organization that sponsors uh, apprenticeship programs, particularly in manufacturing. 
uh, the manufacturing consortium. We're going to come back to that one as well, as well as labor unions. Uh, Job Corps is a uh, is an organization that's based out of Chicago that offers uh, workforce training options for folks uh, from lower income backgrounds. And then uh, the McHenry County Workforce Network is an absolute hidden gem in this county. Uh, they will provide help and, and in a lot of circumstances provide funding for students who have some kind of demonstrated barrier in front of them. And again, that is a very loose term here. That barrier could be anything from they have a disability that's identified in a 504 plan. Uh, they have an IEP. English isn't their first language. There's financial barriers. Uh, you know, they've, you know, they're coming back from being incarcerated. Any of these types of barriers that are there, uh, again, a great, great organization that we have students work with uh, very often immediately after high school. Uh, taking a closer look at a couple of those on the list, uh, labor unions, uh, and we're, we're very strong proponents of considering labor unions for students who are thinking about trades or trades-like programs. Again, students have, and parents have access to, this is just a screenshot uh, from the, uh, the College and Career Guide. These all hyperlink to the apprenticeship pages at each of these local labor unions. These are all within an hour or so of here. Again, the Electricians Union is going to have a representative here. Uh, there's going to be, we're going to have a representative here talking with interested students from the, uh, the last one on the list, uh, the Cement Masons and Plasters Union. We're also trying to get a couple others in here to make sure that students are aware of labor union opportunities. Uh, the paid internship program, uh, Kristen, Amy, Jake, if any of you want to jump in on this as well, because this is one that really impacts all of us, I'll give kind of the intro here. Um, the, there's a local organization that, that Jake and I are a part of uh, called the Manufacturing Pathways Consortium. It's a group of local educators, uh, businesses, industry partners, other supporting organizations, some nonprofit organizations that all pool our resources together to keep manufacturing strong in McHenry County. A couple of years ago, uh, we got a, a grant through the federal government to offer paid summer internships for any 16 to 18 year old in the county uh, through one or two of over 20 different local manufacturing partners. Again, first and foremost, uh, we, we promote this heavily to students that are considering uh, careers involving manufacturing, welding, CNC machining. Uh, we also, again, for especially at 16 to 18, we'll also um, encourage students to considering trades or even sometimes business and engineering as well as, as our partners can al also offer insight into, into what uh, those career areas look like. Again, it's basically paid career exploration. So it's one of the, it, I would argue it is, this is actually the best and coolest uh, local career opportunity I have ever seen in my 19 years doing this for a living. Uh, Kristen, Amy, Jake, do any of you want to expand on this one? I mean, I think it's so important for people to experience different career areas to see if you like it or not, you know, and gain that experience. But this, these opportunities are, don't come very often and to take advantage of it early on when you can. I think also um, I have had the opportunity to um, go through a lot of these manufacturing companies and I know that I was surprised um, at the opportunity. Well, first, I want to say I was surprised at how clean these these places are. Like, I, I hate to stereotype, but I just was picturing this like just assembly line, like, you know, whatever. These these places were so clean and had so many opportunities. Um, you know, there's accounting. I know they had um, some of these companies had like um, local college students that were in there doing that. And so it's nice that they're expanding it to high school, but there's so many opportunities besides just assembly line. And I think it's great that they offer um, the kids to go through different departments and then they can be like, gosh, I didn't even know this existed or this was an option. Um, so I think it's, I think it's awesome. And the pay is great. So I think it's a great opportunity. I'd highly recommend, um, you know, getting involved with this, if that's your interest. Excellent. Jake, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to chime in with here. No, I just, uh, just obviously echoing Kristen and Amy's sentiments. It's just a great opportunity to network and learn about all the different opportunities within manufacturing and not just working on, on the floor, but opportunities within, you know, HR, finance, sales, all different opportunities um, to kind of get, get yourself out there and just learn what uh, what's going on in your backyard, in your community. 
Yeah, we are incredibly fortunate to have this program available to our students. As I said, like I, I'm not kidding when I say this really is the most immersive uh, experience that, that I've ever seen at the local level. Uh, for for this population and the fact that they're getting paid for it too is <laughs> you really can't beat that. Uh, this this slide I work in as we start uh, transitioning, I got a couple couple more things here before we we formally toss things over to Kristen and Jake. But again, as I I've built this statement into my repertoire as I, as I work with students individually in small groups and in, and in larger groups, you know, presentations as well. Yes, MCC is your traditional transfer school you know we always send dozens of students a year there for that purpose i would also make the argument that mcc is a trade school i cannot reference that enough mcc has programs that many of those trade schools i had up a few screens ago also have and because mcc is a public community college those programs are going to come at a fraction of the price from some of those private traditional trade schools. You know, for just to give one quick example, you know, you could go to a, a traditional trade school to become a certified auto mechanic and pay about $30,000 for that program, or you could go to MCC, pay $5,000 for the exact same training and the exact same certification. So if you know if, you know, if your students are considering Work, uh, workforce training options, I can't implore you enough. Take a look at what MCC has to offer because odds are they're going to have it or have something really similar to it and it's going to be a fraction of the price. Uh, this I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just briefly steal a little MCC thunder here. I like to throw this slide up here and this is an intentionally overwhelming slide. I want people to look at this and be like, what is going on? There's so many words on the screen. This is about a third of these certification programs that MCC offers. And it could be anything from business to automotive, to culinary, to graphic design, to cybersecurity, to welding, to machining, to construction codes, to fitness instruction. These are all things that can be done at MCC in a matter of months, not years. Months, not years, at a fraction, again, of the cost. Uh, in the rare circumstance that MCC does not have a program or an area a student is looking for, uh, we can partner with other local community colleges as well. The reason, by the way, folks, in case you're curious, the reason why we keep talking about MCC is because every student who attends McHenry High School lives in MCC's district. Therefore, McHenry County College is our in-district community college. If you went to a different community college for something that MCC also offers, that other community college is going to charge you three times as much because you don't live in their district. So there are a few things MCC doesn't have, and that's why we partner with these other places. So for instance, uh, if I have a student, and this is a real example, a student who's looking at interior design, MCC does not have that, but Harper College down in Palatine does. So those students will work with me, will jump through an incredibly minor hoop at MCC called a joint agreement, and students uh, in our district can uh, seek out one of these programs at a different community college, but most importantly, pay as if it was offered at MCC. So again, I don't want anyone to pay anything more than they need to for their next steps. And Jake, I did remove HVAC. I had that mistakenly in the in-person one yesterday. So out, out of courtesy to you, my friend. Uh, a couple more slides before we turn things over to our partners at MCC. Uh, again, referencing that School Links program we have, um, Again, yes, this program will do, you know, help students who are interested in four-year colleges identify which ones fit them, but it also can help students identify which trade, technical, and community colleges have, have programs they're looking for as well. So again, we can run filtered searches. So again, for instance, if someone is looking for, for technical trade schools, community colleges that have medical imaging, this program will help them find that. A couple other quick things. Uh, all public community colleges, all public colleges, and whether it's community or four-year, are legally obligated to offer disability services for students uh, with 504 plans in high school, IEPs in high school, health plans. Uh, again, public schools are legally obligated to provide that, uh, accommodative services. Uh, most private schools do as well. Private schools technically do not legally have to do it, but most do anyways because they know if they don't, they're going to lose out on 25% of their future population. All right, two slides on financial aid before uh, before I, I shift things over here to our MCC partners. 
Uh, again, we are going to take a deeper dive on this topic uh, on the evening of October 11th uh, for an in-person session here at McHenry High School or the next day, the 12th uh, at 8.30 in the morning for a virtual session. Uh, however, we'll give a couple of tidbits today. Uh, financial aid not only covers four-year colleges, uh, community colleges also accept that exact same financial aid and the bulk of private trade and technical schools do as well. You apply for financial aid. By the way, financial aid is the simple definition is it's help from the federal and state government to pay for your next steps. Uh, you apply for that during senior year by completing an online form called the FAFSA. Uh, you do that at FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A dot gov. Normally, it opens October 1st of a student senior year. However, this year they are completely revamping the FAFSA. So anyone who's watching this representing a, a student in the class of 2024, uh, you, that FAFSA will not open until December of this year. But again, we'll make sure that info stays in front of seniors and families from this year's graduating class. When you fill out the FAFSA, in reality, you're applying for three different types of financial aid. Uh, working from the bottom up, there's work study, which uh, the simple version is it's a part-time job on a college campus, but because it's federal financial aid, they don't take taxes out, which is nice. The second type is the ugly type loans. Some students have to take it out depending on what their next step is and what their circumstances are. But again, we want to minimize those loans, if not eliminate them. Uh, if When students do have to take out loans, we encourage them to consider doing it through the Department of Education, through federal aid, uh, because they will not charge as high of an interest rate as your family bank will. Uh, the last one is the one that everybody wants. Those are grants. That is free money. Uh, not everyone is eligible for grants. Uh, the determination is largely based on family income. There's a few other factors as well, but that is the main factor that goes into that calculus to see who's eligible for them. Um, grants, again, can be used at community colleges such as MCC, as well as those private trade and technical schools. One more slide on paying for things, and that would be scholarships. Ms. Buchanan, I'm going to, here, here's a little uh, preview. I'm going to throw things to you for your feedback on this in about 30 seconds. Uh, scholarships really just cut into the chase. Uh, you tend to find them in three main places. There's a couple other places you can look as well, but these are the main ones. Uh, first and foremost, you always want to look at the schools themselves. So what does, what does MCC offer? You know, for instance, if any private trade schools out there offer scholarships, what do they offer? Uh, most people tend to get their scholarship money from the schools they attend. Um, the second one would be local sources. Uh, we Every year we, we maintain a list of local scholarships. For the most part, those are offered from businesses or organizations within McHenry County, if not closer, or even some within the, the community of McHenry itself. And folks, there are some local scholarships that are just for students going into workforce training based programs. So put another way, we offer scholarships every year that students who are going away to four-year colleges are not eligible for because they're not the target population. So there's money out there to be had. Uh, the last scholarship source would be national sources. That would be where you run a scholarship search engine. Uh, there's a free one. There's a really free good one uh, in school links. We encourage students to start there. Hey, Miss Buchanan, how would you advise uh, students and parents to go about looking for scholarships? Um, these resources that Mr. Menke talked about are, are awesome, but in addition to that, some, some things to think about that you might not be aware of that I, you know, have found through my own journey with my own kids is checking, um, your workplace as parents. A lot of times, um, your workplace may have scholarships. Um, I know my husband's a firefighter and his, Firefighter Association has scholarships, multiple scholarships each year that are specifically for kids of firefighters. Um, I know that just in general, like Walmart, Starbucks, Chipotle, all those places offer um, scholarships if the student works there. So there's a lot of workplaces that have been opening up that as an incentive for um, college students. And you know that are are going in the work into these workforce programs too um, to offer them scholarships. Um, also, if you attend church, you know there's a lot of different things that are beyond um, the local sources that could be you know within your family. So I I would highly recommend that you look into those um, types of um, opportunities also. 
All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Buchanan. Sure. All right. We're going to move on to our next slide, and I'm going to turn things over to our partners from MCC, Kristen and Jake. Hi. So, yeah, we're going to dive into what type of opportunities are available through McHenry County College and what that process might look like. Um, so I'm going to start um, going through this stuff. But, Jake, anytime you want to jump in to say something, please feel free to do that. Um, let's keep going. So what can you study at McHenry County College? We kind of covered this a minute ago. We are focusing on these two you see in the middle here, these career degrees, the 30 plus AAS, that's Associates Applied Science degrees. They have titles in the names like automotive technology, business management, fire science. These are designed so that when you graduate, you go directly into that particular career. So the courses in these are very specific to that career area. So in fire science, you're literally taking courses on how to basically be a firefighter right? There are some general education courses tied to these associate's degrees, very few of them. Um, and so your intent, if you're starting this, is that you are planning on going into one of these careers. They can transfer on to bachelor's degrees. We do uh, partner with specific schools that will allow that. So if you intend to grow this over time, that's still an opportunity. Um, but also we have over 65 certificate programs and you notice these also have names in the title like bookkeeping, construction codes, fitness instructor. These are smaller versions of those associate's degrees and they do not have any general education requirements at all. So if you never wanna take a math class again or a, a speech class for instance, Instead, if you're gonna be taking fitness instructor, you're only taking courses that you'd be important to then when you complete your degree, be a fitness instructor. So um, these are often completed in as little as one semester or, or two semesters or as however time frame makes sense for you. So we're very flexible. Um, we also have a variety of non-credits. So Associates of Applied Science and certificate programs are credit earning programs. They go toward a credit. Um, a college credit transcript, um, but we also have additional uh, career training programs that Jake can talk about that are even faster and are very even more specific to certain career areas. Wanna jump in Jake for those? Yeah, happy to jump in and talk about uh, the career training programs are, are meant to be quick, uh, short-term uh, career entry programs. Here's a, kind of an active list of what we have to offer. Um, the great things with these programs is um, it's uh, kind of, uh, an entry point to start to look at an interest, maybe, um, maybe do like an earn and learn model too, where you can jump into one of these uh, quick training programs, get certified, and then start working in the field, making a little bit of money, and then also determining is this a path I want to continue on? Is this uh, you know a career for me, or is this an opportunity to kind of learn more? Uh, specifically when you're looking at healthcare options, if you're thinking healthcare is something you're interested in, um, but you, you know, you want to be sure about that, then, uh, you could look at programs such as our EKG tech, medical assisting, phlebotomy technician programs. This is, uh, quick eight to 12 week programs where you can, uh, complete the program, get certified, start working in the field, and then kind of build your network and build your, uh, career exploration profile thinking if you know, healthcare is, is something for you or not. Um, and then some of our other programs are vet assistant program. It's a really, really popular program and it's an awesome opportunity for students that are still in high school to jump in. Um, there's high school discount available, which would uh, potentially cover 50% of the tuition or 50 take discount of tuition 50%. Um, and that's an awesome opportunity too, where you get to you get the hands-on experience in the class, and then you get the um, shadowing externship clinical hours as well. Uh, many times those are paid uh, out working hours, and you get yourself exposed to the clinic. If you like to work with animals, get yourself um, kind of networked in that, in that community and seeing if that's your uh, career path. Um, uh, home inspection and real estate, those are two state licensed programs. So you, you do those classes, you complete them successfully, and then you have the opportunity to become licensed through the state of Illinois. Also quick uh, programs, typically um, most all of these programs are going to be a semester or less. So you're talking six, 16 weeks or less, um, and you could potentially be certified and work within the field. So definitely a lot of opportunities to uh, continue to explore. Um, and then take advantage of some of the class opportunities as a high school student still. Thanks. So we're going to jump back um, to probably skip to the next 
uh, where we are. So here we are. So this is a snapshot of different career areas that McHenry County all College supports. So all of our programs are actually um, actually under these little selectors. So if you're on our website, mchenry.edu slash path, or just mchenry.edu, you can search, find these. Um, if you want to see what kind of programs do we offer in information technology, for instance, you can click that little button and every single associate's degree and certificate and transfer program that we offer that's tied to that career area is going to be listed there. So you can click on that to learn more about what is the mobile application design and development degree. You know, uh, what can that what kind of careers are tied to that degree? What kind of pay is tied to that kind of degree? How much does it cost at MCC? And what classes are involved in it? What so you can actually go very far into researching. We don't have time to talk about all 65 certificates and 30 plus associate's degrees, uh, but I wanna give you the ability to know that this is available to explore. And of course, all of us are happy to talk you through specific interests and dive deep. I do. I am connected with all of the department chairs, all of the instructors. So if you want to come explore, say the automotive department and just like see what it looks like and talk with the jet department chair, they'd love to do that. And all of these departments would love to do that. So if you know there's something you wanna explore in a little bit more depth, talk with us and we're happy to get you connected. Um, I wanna show you an example. Uh, we Our certificate programs, which are smaller, often stack, and this is kind of an example of what that looks like. So maybe if you are talking with us and say, I just want to get trained as quickly as possible and start working in automotive, What's what can I do as fast as possible? And if you're going for a credit program, maybe that's a, an automotive electrical certificate, which is I think only three or four courses. Um, you could get that done pretty quickly and then just start working in that area. It's just those three or four courses in automotive. But if you want to then, add on a few additional courses, you can get a higher, larger degree, the chassis certificate, or a little bit more and earn the um, automotive maintenance technician, technician certificate, which is basically the core curriculum of the associate's degree. You could stop there, um, or you can earn a few more classes and then have your full associate's applied science and automotive technology, which would give you more um, opportunities in that career area. So some students I talk to say, yeah, I'm going in it for, for the full associate's degree. That's my plan. And we can plan around that, make it a two-year program, et cetera. Some students say, I really want to take off a smaller piece to chew, kind of go a little bit step by step. Um, so we're happy to make it work with the, whatever plan works best for you. And they do roll up. Those certificates often roll up into a larger degree if that's what you choose to do over time. So. Uh, most people are kind of on the fence, either between a few different programs or maybe are really undecided, uh, or maybe you really are decided and you know what you love and what you want to go into. That's all great. These resources are per perfect for helping you go a little bit deeper and learning more about yourself. If you are undecided, we have a nice undecided website uh, here that can help guide you through steps to help you um, what Mr. Mankey explained earlier, figure out what your values are and your skills and kind of help you get directed in what kind of program you wanted to go forward with. Um, and it's okay to come to college not quite knowing exactly where you're going yet. We can help you with that decision even once you get to college and it's okay to change your mind when you're in college as well. Uh, but knowing that as you're going through, get in touch with those job uh, shadowing opportunities and internships and apprenticeships. Uh, we talked about the rotational internship program. These are all fabulous opportunities. Uh, Jake, would you want to talk a little bit about apprenticeship opportunities at MCC? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, as uh, Kristen was talking about the, the opportunities through our career services department where we can work on um, looking at internships and micro internships and then apprenticeships, all of them are great opportunities to potentially get paid, to continue that exploration and seeing if it's a field of interest. Um, we talked about the rotational internship program, which is uh, a great, a tremendous opportunity. Um, but yeah, throughout the, um, a, a lot of these opportunities come because we work closely and have relationships with many of our manufacturing community, uh, community and our business community in McHenry County. And they come to us seeking, um, you know, students to learn or seeking, seeking to fill p open positions. So, um, at any point working with our career services department, reaching out to them, um, and uh, looking at what opportunities are available. Micro internships too are kind of, uh, kind of like a short-term uh, based uh, internship opportunity. We had a uh, company reach out recently. They were looking for um, students in the web design area because they had a small short-term project that they wanted to give students an opportunity to kind of 
jump into a project, but also get paid for it. Um, so that was kind of uh, an example of some of the opportunities within uh, MCC and some of our um, community. Um, and a lot of it is just uh, making those connections with our community members and our business community uh, for students to um, be able to learn and grow and continue that, that uh, career exploration process. And I also want to add for the apprenticeship opportunities through McHenry County College is that you are basically contracting with an organization, a company, to have them train you in that particular skill. You're actually working for that company and you get paid. So you have students who are making a very high income as they enter this program. And if we, the company actually pays for your degree or your certificate through McHenry County College. So you're actually earning college credit, a certificate and or degree. And you're actually coming out ahead. You have no debt and actually a positive, right? You're coming out with money. So that's a great opportunity if, there, if, if it aligns with your interest area. So uh, if you are a student who's looking at McHenry County College, know that our summer and fall applications are open now. You can get that application in. You can use the code McHenry to uh, waive the application fee. If you're going for credit, that's the process. Anything that's non-credit uh, through what Jake was talking about, you don't actually apply to MCC. You just kind of talk to Jake and they can help you get registered for those programs, um, depending on what you're looking at. So. Follow those emails, discuss those next steps with us. And if you are dual credit, awesome. You would still have to apply to the college if you are um, gonna continue forward with us after graduating from your high school. So financial aid is available, as we mentioned. Um, I know that we're gonna talk about that a lot in future sessions, as well as scholarships for these opportunities, as well as scholarships for some of our non-credit opportunities. So um, keep their ears open for that as well. And something that we did not mention is that we have a few special grants that are not tied to the FAFSA that we are offering for students, for example, going into early childhood education and a lot of our healthcare programs, um, the Paul the Path grant, that's gonna be covering nursing, CNA, EMT paramedic, phlebotomy, EKG, others, Jacob, I meant forgetting some, OTA, PTA. So these are particular, um, these are areas of, that the state of Illinois has identified need more workers and the state of Illinois is willing to pitch in money to help you pay for college for those programs. So uh, talk with us because there's a lot of funding available to um, help you pay for college. And if there is a specific area that you're looking at, uh, MCC is going into specific uh, information sessions where you get to talk with faculty and career uh, people who have careers in these areas. If you see some one of these clusters you're interested in, sign up for one of these days. Uh, there's going to be an evening Zoom session for all these events, or if you're available to come out during the day, that's great. Um, but we also have additional events coming out in spring, so we'll announce those as soon as they're available. They are all tied to your school links account as well. So you can register for those events and attend them. We are also having an open house on October 9th. So on that day, you can come in for a information session about the college. We'll go into more detail about um, everything as well as walking around campus for a campus tour and a, an information session for the FAFSA and scholarships. So you can register for that or you can just drop in, that's okay. Um, we would want to see you and experience the college while it is in session because we are we do have classes on October 9th while some other high schools and other organizations are um, you know available that day. So come check us out. Again, here's that link to the events. Um, so reach out to us if you have any questions. If you do want to have those individual meetings or talk through anything, uh, reach out to the admissions and recruitment department. We have new student enrollment coaches who can meet with you in, on a very individualized basis and help you get connected with those um, career areas of interest and those you know, department chairs to help you explore in more depth. Thank you. All right. Well, again, Jake and Kristen, we're so fortunate to have you as strong partners here. And I mean, I mean that sincerely, not just because we're on the same presentation together. Uh, I'll pause for a moment, uh, again, for the our live viewers, the ones who are actually watching the live uh, session of this right now, you can enter questions into the chat right there on YouTube, but we could see those and respond in real time. Uh, so as I give our, our live viewers one more moment to uh, to do that or consider doing that, uh, Amy, I'll throw it back to you uh, just for a moment here. Uh, if there was one piece of feedback that you would give for students who are considering workforce training careers, maybe something they can do or something they can engage in while, while in high school, 
what's one piece of feedback or advice you would give them? Um, I would say, I would say to get involved in the, the classes um, as the first step. Um, there's so many hands-on classes um, here at McHenry High School. There's, you know, DIY, the do-it-yourself, there's manufacturing, um, woods, metals. There's so many classes that they can see if they would be interested in those. Um, and then from there, getting involved in potentially talking about doing an internship or um, some type of opportunity that they can get paid and do um, do on the job training. But I think I think starting here to just kind of gauge their interests and then taking advantage of the opportunities of internship, paid internships. Excellent. Love it. Again, take advantage of the resources and opportunities that are there for you. Uh, I am not seeing any other questions roll in, so I think we will wrap things up here. Again, uh, on behalf of, uh, of our colleagues here at McHenry High School, as well as our colleagues over at McHenry County College, we are here to support you, not only your students, but also you as parents and guardians and families. Don't feel like you're on an island with this process. You have us to help you navigate those waters. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for engaging. And always ask your students, what are you looking forward to?